It's all intrinsically linked, all in harmony, all in balance, all the time. To believe in Jesus and enter into the relationship with him is indeed to accept him as Lord. And so learn from him and then live for him based upon what you've learned. Well, hello. Welcome to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. My name is Charles, and we're here at my kitchen university where the coffee is always good and the conversation's even better. Mm. Oh, this is going to be a good chat. Now, before we get started, I do want to take a moment to thank, and I believe it's Eno Chicago. Forgive me if I mispronounced your name. I did try my best. But I do want to say thank you so very, very, very much for this wonderful topic. Also, you know, if you're interested in something that you'd like us to talk about, please let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to talk about whatever. Now, I have had two suggestions already, you know, two chats for the next two chats, rather. So when you make a suggestion, just realize it may be the third or fourth one in line. But we'll get to it. So what exactly are we looking at this time? Well, it is the question. It is the topic. How are we saved? And, you know, I find this to be a very important question. I mean, if we are going to be Christian people, it might prove just a little bit useful to know exactly how we can become a Christian, right? And yes, we are going to kick this around while looking at what this means through the lens of what it means to be a Christian, which, as always, is being a follower of Jesus, the Christ, which involves a relationship with him, leading to studentship from him, leading to a life lived from everything learned, or we could say living for him. Not one, not the other, but all together. All intrinsically linked, all working in harmony. That's Christian faith. Well, you know, if you think about it, this does pretty much tell us exactly how we are saved, right? through accepting Jesus' gift of a relationship with himself and with the Father. And this relationship does indeed lead to our learning from him and our living for him. Well, okay then. I guess we're done. Cheers. (laughs) Well, not done really. I mean, yes, it is that simple. Yes, that sums it up very well. But let's take a moment to explore this and see if we can discover all that is packaged into this little statement, into our simple definition of Christian faith. And I think you're going to find that even as all aspects of our definition are intrinsically linked, so too is everything that goes into it. Ready? All right, then. So, where to begin? I tell you what, let's begin at the beginning. Who actually saves us? Ourselves or God? Yeah, it's all God. 100%. I mean, this has his name written all over it, right? Jesus tells us this in the book of John. He says that it without the Father drawing us, you know, calling to us, we can't possibly get to know Jesus. The Father calls us to Jesus, then we have the ability to get to know him. And when he is asked, who then can possibly be saved, also found in the book of John, he says that with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So, you know, God and God alone is the one who saves us, P. 
period, end of conversation. That's just the way it is. Now, I will list several passages concerning this in the description area, so you can go check them out for yourself. Indeed, I'm going to reference a bunch of scripture in this episode, and I'll list them all in the description area just for you. Also, concerning this, you know, back to our regular scheduled topic. Also, we know that there is nothing we can do to earn it, correct? We can't earn our salvation. We can't earn this relationship with God. I mean, in Ephesians, we are even told that it is through grace and grace alone that we can receive this. Indeed, there we are told that it is indeed a gift of God, not by works, you know, so that no one of us could boast. I can't boast on saving myself. You can't boast on saving yourself. No one can boast about how good they were that God took notice. So, it is an unearned gift from God. Well, gifts need to be accepted, do they not? Or they never become ours at all, right? Well, okay then. What is next? What's the next thing, then, that is packed into our simple statement? Well, I found something in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 16, to be exact. That, that, that's pretty interesting. Here, a jailer has locked up Paul and Silas, right? That's the story. And at this point in the story, the jailer asks Paul and Silas what he needed to do in order to be saved. That was his exact question. What must I do to be saved? Well, he was told that he needed to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is repeated in several places in John. And yes, I will list those for you. So, you must believe in Jesus, which we are told always includes his atoning death and his resurrection. For these give him, and him alone, the power, the authority, and the ability to bestow this gift upon us, right? Because it was through these things that he has been able to reconcile us to God the Father. He made it possible for us to enter into eternal life, which he himself defines as knowing the Father and himself. See, that is very relational. Well, and I think that's so important that it is relational, that I do want to highlight just how relational this is by mentioning, 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 telling you about another passage that I found. <laughs> this one in 1 John, yeah, 1 John chapter 5, where we are told that whoever believes in Jesus is born of God. And then in 1 John chapter 3, he says, See, what great love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are, he says. And he continues to say that because of this, because we are now children of God, we have passed from death unto life. So salvation, then, is a relationship with God. Now, this tells me that being saved is, well, not a matter of status. It is a matter of being, of being alive, which is being in a relationship with God. What a beautiful gift that is. So, Belief in Jesus is relational, and it is an integral part of accepting his gift. Oh, indeed. In Romans chapter 5, Paul says that it is through faith that we are introduced into the grace in which we stand. See, it is belief that introduces us to the grace leading to the gift. And in Colossians chapter 2, 
We are told that we are raised through Jesus, excuse me, raised with Jesus through faith in God and what God has done is working, right? See, faith and faith alone gets us there. Well, we could say then that the only ones who have truly accepted his gift are those who believe in Jesus. Well, we are covering a pretty good amount of ground. So you may be thinking, okay, is there anything else to be found all bundled up in your simple statement, your definition of Christianity? Would you be surprised to find out that, yeah? Yeah, there is something else. Well, let's take a look at Romans chapter 10, starting in verse 8. Now, this is the verse that tells us that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, then we will be saved. For, he continues, I think this is verse 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will indeed be saved. So once again, we see the great need to believe in Jesus, not just things about him, but to believe in in him, very relational. And yet, and yet, did you notice that phrase, confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord? What could that add to believing in Jesus? Well, I went to the Greek and English lexicon of the New Testament, professionally known as the BDAG. No, 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 seriously. B-D-A-G stands for the names of the editors, you know, to see what I could learn about this word, confess. Yeah, I know, kind of the geeky thing to do, but hey, it's me. I do that from time to time. Well, according to this go-to source for scholarly interpretations, its use here indicates a profession of allegiance. So you see, it's not so much saying the words, Jesus is Lord, as it is proclaiming that Jesus is my Lord. Isn't that interesting? You know, so telling Jesus you want to accept his gift, you know, of a relationship with him, does indeed include proclaiming your allegiance to him. And, well... Getting back to our statement about what Christianity is, this touches on the second and third parts of what it means to be a Christian. You know, when you're learning from him, how to live for him, right? This, in truth, is accepting him as Lord of your life. It's all intrinsically linked, all in harmony, all in balance, all the time. To believe in Jesus and enter into the relationship with him is indeed to accept him as Lord, and so learn from him and then live for him based upon what you've learned. I know. See, being saved is all about being in a relationship with God, and that we just can't earn. The only thing we can do is to respond to his invitation and accept it. Now, if you're wondering all about repentance, you know, why I haven't mentioned repentance? Well, technically, that actually happens before being saved. And it is simply the decision to positively respond to God calling to you, right? God's calling you to Jesus. You decide you want to change your life, change your ways, and you turn to respond positively. That's repentance. Now, we talk about repentance in an earlier chat, and I'll link to that in the description area. And so, technically, that happens before you're saved. Now, if you're also wondering about why I haven't mentioned the word obey just yet, well, let me ask you this. What else would you call living out 
of what you have learned, living everything that you have learned from Jesus, right? I covered it. I just didn't use the word. And, you know, technically, that can only truly happen after you have been saved, after you have accepted Jesus' invitation, which is after you have accepted him as Lord. All right. Well, I guess we're done. And, you know, and, and again, I, I'm very sorry if I mispronounced that, but I hope I've answered your question or, you know, at least put you on a good path for further investigation. Now, next time, we're going to look at something else you wanted to hear about, and that's the possibility of losing our salvation. And that may be a two or three cup of coffee type chat. Whew. Please keep me in prayer as we start putting this together. That would be very helpful. And, you know, until then, well, let me know what you think in the comment section. And please, let me know why you think so. See, I have received many comments over the past few weeks, and I've truly enjoyed hearing from everybody, both those that agree with me and those that disagree with me. Now, the enjoyment comes when a reason is given. Then I can understand where they're coming from, their point of view. We can reason together. Conversations can begin. And that's the fun part. For conversations can lead to growth for both of us, a change in one or both of us, and perhaps even friendship with the both of us. Thank you for doing so. Well, all right then. Until next time, may you continue to grow in your relationship with God as your knowledge of Him, God the Father, grows through your learning more from God the Son, Jesus, and as you're guided and learned through God the Holy Spirit. And in all that, take it easy, take it slow, and may coffee into your cup always flow. <laughs>